CBSD with you. Tutorials on gaming. Before we start, if this is your first time to the channel and you would like to learn more about FreeBSD and the journey to a better desktop and server, then please hit subscribe and hit the bell so you don't miss out. Well, we're back onto the test computer and here's a reminder of what the directory tree looks like. Very good. And we created a snapshot uh, last time and cloned it. Uh, but I'm going to get into more about the snapshot. So now I'm going to create another slap. Now I'm going to create another snapshot. Uh, but this time using an R switch, which stands for recursive, which will copy everything in the Z root pool, but give it the name recursive snapshot. I'll show you in a minute what it means. Yeah, that's a little bit busy, so I'm going to try and uh, clean this up a bit. We'll try this one. That's better. Now you can see it's taken the snapshot of the entire Z root pool and everything in it, but afterwards it's all been named recursive snapshot. So rather than doing it individually, it does it all at once, which is pretty cool. Now we're just going to compare the snapshot to the original data set uh, from which it was created, in this case, the Z pool. Well, the Z root. And snapshots work by using copy on write. So they don't copy everything. They only save the changes that were made and not everything over and again. So they actually take up very small amounts of space. I'll show this in operation by copying the contents of Etsy password into a um, var temp directory. Then I'll make a snapshot of the var directory then. And I'll make a comparison with the var temporary straight after. It makes sense to me as I'm reading it. It might not make sense as I'm saying it, but I'll show you what I mean now. Right, so we'll do copy, etc. or Etsy, then password. And we'll copy it to the var temp folder or directory. And then we'll create a snapshot of the var temp. And we'll call it snapshot two. How original is that? Okay, so and then we'll list. And we'll do a compare. And if you can see, you can see the difference between the first snapshot and the second. And the second contains only the changes to the data set after we copied the password over. As a refer amount actually matches the actual folder itself at 92K. The original snapshot being 88 before we added password. At least that's how I think it is. So it only copies the changes. Now, if we make a comparison to show you um, what's been changed. So ZFS, diff, and then Z root var temp. And you put in the name of the snapshot that you want to use. In this case, the original snapshot we made, the recursive one. And it will show you that M is telling you that the path or file was modified and the plus is that the path or file was added so that the addition was the password added to var temp. So you can see what's changed and that it was added after the original snapshot was created. That's actually pretty neat. I like that. Another interesting feature which I think I'm going to cover is uh, snapshot rollback. But let's go into the var temp uh, directory and if, say, for instance, we accidentally delete, oh, I don't know, the password file. I'm going to 
allowed to have a list of that too. See whether it's gone. And there it is. If we deleted, if that was an important file and we deleted that by accident, but we'd already made a snapshot of it, all we'd need to do to get everything back will be ZFS rollback. Put the name of the pool and the directory. So I put snapshot two, and that was when we took the second one after the password had been added. And as you can see, it's now back. Back into the var temp. So there's the one where we added. If I can uh, highlight it. The one in the middle is where we deleted, and the one at the bottom is where we rolled back. Very nice and very efficient. So the next thing I'm doing is under the replication heading, and that's making a backup of your snapshots. Now, ideally, what you'd want to do is store your snapshot some either off the system or out of the building or somewhere far away. And but in this instance, what I'm going to do is store it in a different pool on the same machine. Now, the thing is. When I was doing this, um, I just had one disk in. So I had one single disk, um, which was under Stripe. But I didn't have a spare one in this uh, machine. So DC 5700, it's, there's not a lot of room for a second hard drive. And doing this, though, I realized I really needed to uh, quickly put another disk in, which I did. So you'll first see me attempt to do this and coming up with an error that I'm not unable to uh, create a new pool because there's not another disk or uh, etc. And then later on you'll see me doing it right after I insert the disk. So really to get the most out of ZFS is to use more than just one disk. And it's not always possible. And you can still get a lot of benefits from using one disk, one hard drive. But really you need two. And uh, yeah. even if the second one is just a backup drive, to put all your uh, snapshots on. If you know you can use mirroring if you want, that's fine. Gives you plenty of redundancy on that lot. But if you're just going to use, if you're going to have two discs, just use one just purely to to back up your your snapshots. But anyway, yeah. that's that's what I learned when making this video. Right, the second disc is installed. We're going to try this again. And having created the backup pool, there it is. Look. Yeah, relatively comparable same size drive. Now we're going to create the snapshot again. We're going to try all this again. But this time we're going to call it Robo Backup. Why not? I'm going to list the uh, backups available. And yeah, it's at the top lot. Third one down. There you go. So now if you try ZFS send, Z root at Robo Backup, and we're going to try and send this to the newly created backup pool. You know, it, the syntax, it's always the syntax with me. Yeah, there you go. Forgot to add the uh, forgot to add the little arrow pointing to the right. There we go. And look, it's in there now. Because previously the allocated size of the backup pool was three hundred and sixteen k. So now it's gone up to five hundred twelve. So, so that tells me it's been added. And that's it. Um, I've not gone into too much detail again like the previous videos because, I'd, because frankly, I'd, I'd, I can't. But I'm enjoying this so far. The, the, the possibilities. I should have done this years ago. But the possibilities are endless. And um, I don't know. It's going to take me a long, long time to 
learn ZFS. There are plenty of other topics I haven't even I haven't even brushed on yet. You know, incremental backups, um, sending encrypted backups over SSH. Uh, I think I've covered quarters, which is uh, you know, reservations, compression, which I think I've covered the question. Deduplication, uh, and of course. Um, the elephant in the room for me is also ZFS and jails. I haven't done that. Yeah, so um, we'll have to see. Anyway, thanks for watching, and I will catch you next time. If you want to see more videos like this, then hit that like button. And to make sure you don't miss out, please consider subscribing, as this really helps me help you.